Hey guys, Jam Strap here, and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how I go about making my heresy style space wolves. Now, I do kind of diverge in certain parts with the color scheme because this is kind of my own chapter that I've made, so it's not going to be a pure heresy style. But when I get to those kind of points, I will point them out. So, this is the model I'm going to be painting today. I'm actually busy making a video on how to make snowy bases, and I'm using this guy. So I'll stop the basing video at this point so I can finish painting this model. Then I'm going to get back to the other thing and back and forth trying to get both videos done. But yeah, this is my dude. He's all kit bashed up. I uh, did some green stuff beard work there. So I think he's looking pretty snazzy. So yeah, he's got an extra couple bits of interesting things I can paint for you guys. Like the power weapon, his beard, his like little gem pistol and all that kind of stuff. And quickly, just a little disclaimer. I'm definitely no like golden demon kind of winner this is going to be my version of like slightly above tabletop standard at least that's what i th feel it is now normally if i'm doing like hqs and your characters and stuff i'll put a bit more e extra effort in so as i'm going through the video i will kind of point out parts where you can go put a little bit of extra effort in and i'll give you some examples or something like that but this is just my my quick way to get pretty decent looking heresy style wolves now I am going to be using my airbrush for some steps, but that's just to make it quicker. Now if you're using a paintbrush, that's perfectly fine. Those steps are going to be exactly the same. Yeah, I'll be using pretty much the same colors that you would be using, you know, Citadel range, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so for example, I'm going to be priming with this Vallejo black. Obviously you can just use a rattle can. And also the main base color for this model is going to be Mechanicus Standard Gray. So I'm pretty sure GW does a a spray can of that so I don't check that out because it'll actually skip a step for you as well but I'm going for black and then I'm going to go for a kind of zenithal highlight kind of thing with the with the light gray from like above so I'm going to airbrush those colors quickly I'm just going to do it off screen so you guys don't need to really see this part all right so I've just primed this bad boy up gave him a gave him a bit of a zenithal highlight not a hundred percent because I made some parts a bit lighter like blasted his face with a bit more of the light gray and also the power hammer, because I'm going to try and get that a bit more glowy later. But the power glow thing I'm going to be trying out later, I'll do it at the end of the video, because that's not really anything to do with heresy style space wolves. It's just going to be kind of like a bonus thing at the end, really. Well, that and the face, because I'm <laughs> really not great at painting faces, so I don't really feel like I can teach you much on that. So yeah, I'm going to be doing the, the base of the model which is like the meat and potatoes of the video. And at the end, I'll just add in the extra bonuses of showing you the face and the power weapon. Now, usually when you prime, you want to leave it for a couple hours, especially with airbrush primers. You want to kind of leave them as long as you can before painting. So I'm going to leave this, this set for a bit, but for you guys, it's only going to be a second. And like I said, I'm going to be using Mechanica Santa Gray next, and I'm going to be doing it in the airbrush. But if you're doing it by paintbrush, just do like two, three thin coats. Oh, and I should say, you are going to be base coating everything on you, except for maybe like the face and the weapons. And also it kind of depends on what color you want to be doing your, your shoulder pads and all that kind of stuff. But as I'm doing this through an airbrush, it's kind of hard to avoid those places, so I'm just going to be blasting most of it. But as well, if you're trying to go for kind of a pure heresy style, I'm pretty sure their shoulder pads were just gray as well. They didn't have any fancy colors there, so yeah, you could just slap it all over. Okay, so I've got the Mechanicus and the ground there. Actually, I had a bit of an airbrush issue there where it blasted it out a bit too much paint and I had some like webbing in that, but it's kind of settled down and you can't really notice it now. And to be honest, that's actually a really nice gray right there. If you want to go for a darker gray, you could stop at this point if you wanted to. The next and final step to like pretty much paint 90% of this model is slapping a bit of Dawnstone on there. And to be honest, that's actually the great thing about airbrushing. If you're painting miniatures with like power armor and stuff, where 90% of the model is the same color most of the time, when you're doing it by paintbrush, doing like three, four layers on every single dude, it takes hours. Whereas if you've got a paintbrush, it literally takes you about, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute. So yeah, if you're planning on painting loads of power armor dudes, it might be something you should look into. All right, so I'm all dawn stoned up and it's looking pretty fresh and i know what you're probably thinking you know this gray kind of looks like the color on the spruce and i know gray can kind of be a neutral boringish color but i feel that it it works well with the wolves for one i mean they had 
grey armor back in the day, obviously Harris era, and in my opinion, it looks a bit better than like the baby blue color. But also, the wolves have a lot of warm colors to them. I mean, they've also got a lot of bare heads, you know, like a lot of skin tones, beards, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you've got red jewels, you've got gold, you've got like brown animal pelts. They've got their like red and yellow shoulder pads, sometimes the shoulder pads are white. And of course, you've got like all the bone and talismans and all that kind of stuff that really livens the model up. So yeah, I kind of feel like grey is a nice neutral colour to make all those fancy things just pop out a little bit more. Okay, so you've got two options for the next part. You can do the base coats all over, so you can get all your flesh tones and your gold and all that kind of stuff done now. Or you can go straight into the wash. Now, I normally do the wash first, and I don't really have a reason for that. That's just kind of the, the rhythm of the way I do it. Now, I do a kind of like recess shading with this. You, instead of just like splashing wash all over the things then you have to go back in and clear it all up with Dawnstone again. This part does take quite a bit of time. It's not the best part for like speed painting and that but it's definitely the, the cleaner option than just splashing your whole model with it. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples quickly of how I go about doing this kind of pin wash or recess wash if you call it that. So yeah let's get cracking. Now try don't have too much on there. And not too little either, you don't want to be going back and forth over it all the time. So yeah, you want a bit of a smaller paintbrush for this. So yeah, this is going to be a bit difficult on camera. Well, most things painting wise on camera is extremely difficult. Alright, let's find a little nice easy place to show you guys. So like this, this line behind the leg here. And just run the wash down the leg like that. But of course, don't worry too much if it's a bit messy here. Once you've got the wash and the old base coats done, we're going to come back and neaten everything up with some more Dawnstone again. So yeah, I'm not sure this is really showing up right now, so I'm going to do a couple more and hopefully you guys will be able to pick it up. Now get it down there, especially in these little bits over here. And if you do get a bit too much, you can just like wipe it off with your finger like that. Now put some on this foot right here, this might be a better example for you guys. So yeah, hopefully you can see that one a little bit better. And yeah, we use Agrax Earthshade because it kind of gives the model a bit more of a, a warm, earthy feel compared to the like, kind of like cool, boring color of the gray. So yeah, just continue doing that. Keep getting in these little nooks and crannies like this right here. So you want to get around there, around this area. You know, you want to try and get it underneath that rim, around the fingers. Don't worry too much about going around the logo part here because later you're going to be putting gold and putting Agrax on top of that anyway. And depending on what color you're going to be doing your shoulder, you can do the wash now if you're going for the gray, but if you're doing a different color, then just wait till later. And of course, their backpack has got loads of vents and all that kind of stuff, so you want to get in there as well. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off because it's kind of difficult doing it on camera, and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so I've got the Agrax Earthshade all up in the recesses now. Hopefully you guys can see that a bit better now if my light's not washing it out too much. Yeah, it's definitely looking a bit more like worn in and wolfy now. So yeah, maybe there you can see like the difference between the, the shoulder pad where I haven't done a wash and the leg over there. You can kind of see the difference there. So yeah, like my logo shoulder is going to be black and the other one is going to be red and black, you know, typical wolf pack markings. That's why I haven't put the Agrax shade around the rim there yet either. And also a little tip, now that nothing else is really being painted yet, you can get a little bit of wash like under his, his head there as well, just to give it a bit of shading under that. And also don't forget, kind of like in between the, the back and the backpack part as well. See, so yeah, I know doing this kind of like pin washing technique does take quite a while, but once you get the hang of it, it'll take you about like 10-15 minutes per model, maybe quicker. So for my next step, I really hate painting in these like um, underbody kind of body glove parts on Space Marines. Yeah, painting that black and highlighting it up, I can just, I, it just takes too much work for your standard kind of troop guy. So I've recently started cheating a bit by using the black contrast paint. And not only the like inner joint parts, I actually use this for almost everything now because it's just really quick. You don't have to water it down anything, you just slap it on there. I mean, you can use normal black for this stage. I just do it because, once again, it cuts a corner for me. 
Now I will say though, for when you're doing big areas like my this gun here and the shoulder pad, which I'm going to be doing, I would water it down slightly. Put a pinch of water in there because if you just put two, three coats straight out of the pot, it does kind of get a bit thick and gloopy. And again, don't worry too much when you're getting in those joints if you make a bit of a mess because we'll clean up later. So anyway, I'm going to start doing it now, give you guys an example of how I go about it. And if you can probably tell, I've actually recently spilt this pot, so yeah, be careful. So when you're getting in between the joints and stuff like this, you're going to want to use a small paintbrush again. So yeah, let's try and get this in the this little joint here, if I can, if I can do this on camera. Oh, I just realized I got way too much on that paintbrush. Yeah, I probably should have realized that at first. Uh, should have mentioned contrast paints. Just be careful how much you have on your paintbrush because you can lose control of it. So yeah, just get it in all those little padded areas. And also don't forget the, the parts in between the arms and the stomach, of course. So we've got all the contrast black down now. And you can maybe see on like the shoulder pad and stuff. It's come out pretty smooth, you know, just putting a little bit of water in there. But for example, if you look at this gun here, I just went pure contrast painting, you know, in the little recesses in the corners. It does kind of clump up a bit there. So yeah, like so I said, you should probably put a little bit of water in there with these wider areas. I mean, nothing's ever going to re replace your classic normal paints. But uh, like I said before, I'm trying to cut some corners because I'm really trying to get through my backlog now. And you know, you don't always have to treat every single model like it's your, your top level, you know. As you can see, like then the little behind the leg ribbing area, it's a bit lighter like in the raised area. So you don't have to highlight now, but obviously you can if you want to. Now the next part I'm going to be doing is the like the pistol holster, the belt, little baggies, all that kind of stuff. All right, so for the brown, like I said before, with the gray being kind of like a cool, boringish color, I like to go for really reddish brown. So yeah, first color, we're going to be going for Doomball Brown. That's going to be our base coat. Then we're going to go over with a wash of known oil. Then when we get to the was darker red, it's kind of going to be like a layer slash edge highlight. We're going to go a bit more like a wider with it. And then lastly, we're just going to go for a standard kind of edge highlight with squig orange. Now I'm a massive fan of this color. You can do it really quick and kind of messily and the colors just all kind of work together really, really well and it just looks natural, especially for leather. Two thinnish coats as usual. So basically everything around here is kind of waste area. You can do the, the strap on the gun if you want and you can even break it up by, you know, doing some of the pouches black, but I'm going all brown on this. Yeah, I'd imagine as a, an army, they'd probably get all their stuff manufactured in the same place so they'd be using the same leathers and all that kind of stuff. Make sure you get the belt behind the pouches and of course at the back here as well. Alright so you can see I've got the Doom Bull Brown done now. All up in the nooks and crannies and whatnot. And as you can probably see the mole's getting a bit more livened up at this point. Next up I'm going to be doing the little grippy part there on the hammer and I'm going to be using Xandri Dust. I don't need to show you guys this part it's literally just base coating that section. Oh, and also if you got any kind of like bony bits and skulls and stuff like that, you can base coat that with this as well. All right, so I got the hand grip done and that little toothy bit. I know it might look a bit boring right now, but once we get some Agrax on there, it'll look much better. Alternatively, you can actually go for Rakarth Flesh and Agrax because that's normally a really nice color as well. But I'm going to be using that for kind of the parchment -y thing on the gun, so I won't be doing it on the hand grip today. All right, now on to one of the greatest paints to work with that's Rakarth Flesh. Now there isn't actually that much on this miniature that needs this so I'm going to be putting it on the little representation of parchment on the gun and his face of course. And there we go two thin coats of that on there and it's looking pretty good. I made a bit of a, a splodge there but I'll clean it up later. And yeah and we got a start on the, the skin as well you know I'm going for a kind of pale flesh. Obviously being a kind of viking inspired kind of dude kind of makes sense to me. Now the last base coat before we get onto the metallics and well except for his hair because I'll do that at the end of the video but yeah we're going to be doing red next. And obviously because this guy's a, an intercessor and he's a troop choice I'm going to be making his shoulder red and maybe one of his knees. And of course any like kind of jewelry bling bling bits we'll, we'll get as well. And for this army I'm just going for good old Mephiston red. Just a nice normal red, not, not dark red, no fancy named reds, just red. So I'm going to get this nice and thin down now. I'm going to hit that shoulder and the knee 
and of course the gem as well. And the red's done. It's looking alright. I probably could have gone a bit smooth with my first few coats on the knee there because I got some texture, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Alright, straight on to metallics. So I'm going to be doing the golds first. No real reason here. You can do the silvers first if you want, but yeah. Apart from inside the, the shell casing on the magazine might be easy to, to do now. So for me, my kind of wolfy logo is going to be a gold. Well, I say gold, it's more of a, a bronze to be honest. Yeah, and like I said, the, the shell casings for like the bullets in there. Obviously the, the logo on his chest and the kind of two wolves head on top of the on top of the thunder hammer. So my base going to be Balthazar Gold. So yeah, I'm going to chuck this bad boy down, wash and we're going to highlight up from there. Alright, so two layers of gold have been put down. He's looking extremely bling bling right now. Also, I'm kind of aware that I'm not showing you guys every single step right now because... My kind of video setup for this kind of stuff is not optimal right now. Hopefully in the future it'll get a bit better. Now for this like power hammer part. I'm like I said before, I'm gonna be airbrushing it with kind of like a power effect. But I'm also gonna paint it silver and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys don't want to be doing that, then I'll just show you how I go about painting up a silver weapon. Alright, lead belcher time. Now this part's actually like on its way out, there's not much left in there and it's super old. So hopefully it's not going to leave anything too streaky and weird because it's not acting normally. But yeah, let's get cracking with that. So I'm going to be hitting the parts of the gun that haven't been painted yet. So there's little air vents and I actually painted like a little ring around those top vents on the backpack as well. And of course just lead belch on all the parts that you personally want silver. And it's done. So everything's looking a bit messy right now, but once we got a wash on there, you know, a little bit of liquid talent, everything's going to look a lot better. Yeah, what I'm actually going to do with this weapon I'm using, because there's a lot of silver and gold, this little, like, little power plant cover, I'm going to do it in bronze, just to kind of break up the metallics a little bit. I'm just going to slap a quick thin layer of brass scorpion on there. And there, you can kind of see that it has a little bit of a different vibe going on now. So I'm pretty sure at this point we've done all our base coats and it's on to washing. Now if you want you can just use Agrax Earthshade for everything but I like to get as many different tones as I can so I'm going to go Agrax for some parts and Nuln Oil for pretty much only the silver. Oh and of course the the brown bits go with Nuln Oil as well. Everything else I'm going to be slapping with Agrax Earthshade so I'm going to get cracking with that and yeah starting with Agrax Earthshade just make sure you don't spill it. Yeah, and the same thing as the kind of contrast paints. Just make sure you don't have too much on there. You don't want it to be going all over the place. And with this logo part, don't forget you can also go around the edges a little bit. Just so it pops out as well. Alright, that's both the washes done. You know that sweet, sweet liquid talent making everything look much better now. This is probably my favorite part of painting. is because it goes from, everything goes from looking kind of poop to looking really 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 nice and I haven't done like a little Agrax research shade around the red yet until I've got my pack markings down all right and the next thing to do before we start highlighting everything is to clean up after ourselves like I messed up on this little leg part here so anyway you've gone over with wash or paint or anything just go back over with some dawnstone making it a bit neater I mean I think I even hit my shoulder here with some Agrax by accident so yeah, I'm going to be going over that as well. So just kneading up all your all your base colors now. All cleaned up now and straight on to highlighting. So my next stage I'm going to be doing was darker red for the brown bits. And like I said previously with the was darker red, I do kind of like a thick edge highlight. I don't really layer it on there. It's, just, it's an edge highlight but I'm going in a bit more. So yeah, just going around like you would with a normal edge highlight. Especially with these sharp corners, you know, just hitting it with the side of your brush. And just where you can kind of see where the, the wash is set a little bit, I normally just make a little line along the, there as well. Just do some long lines, you know, small lines, you know, just make it look like it's a bit of scuffed up leather. Alright, some parts on that pistol holster are a bit too thick to be honest. Bit of a slip of the paintbrush there, but like I said before, trying to do things on camera is always a bit awkward. With the with the smaller bags you can you can fill the line in a little bit more. Fill the gap in there. 
and especially with these colors you can you can go as quick or slow as you want because the colors blend together quite nicely all right so that part's done so we've got kind of a nice worn leather effect now we're going to move on to squig orange for a much more normal kind of edge highlight and this is also where we're going to be doing a bit of like little scuffs and stuff like that so like here not only going around the edges but going along those uh, initial scuffs you did with the red before just make them stand out a little bit extra now I actually had a bit too much paint on my paintbrush there so those lines are looking a bit too thick but the camera does make it look a bit more <laughs> worse than it is it'll definitely ease out once it dries and there we go the squig orange highlight is done now I don't know if it's picking up on the camera it's not, not the best work ever but like I said this is just kind of like uh, trying to get your troop guys done as quick as possible level so what I'm going to do now actually is get one of the most time consuming stages out of the way now and that's the edge highlighting and before I start my edge highlighting I just want to give you guys a quick example of if you're doing like a character or you want to put a bit more time and effort in like this guy here I normally put a bit of like weathering in the little black specks here and there the key is not to go too over the top but yeah like I said this is what I'd do if I want to put a bit more effort in probably I should have brought up my dreadnought to show you examples of this but I've actually made videos of that so if you want to check that out but I will show you how to kind of get a weathering effect by just using your highlight color and for the highlight we're going to be using administratum gray okay let's see if I can do this on camera <laughs> this is probably going to be a pain in the ass but like I said um Space Marines have a lot of sharp edges, so it's quite easy if you just want to use the edge of your paintbrush, like this. Yeah, so just lightly hit the edge, like that, just using the side. Easy peasy. Now what you can do is, once you've done your straight lines and stuff, you can start adding little, little scuffs and stuff like that, just to add that kind of weathering effect. Every now and again you can just kind of slap a line across like this. Or, if we use this leg on this side, I'll show you another way to do it. So instead of just doing like one straight line, what you do is you do like lines and dots. So when you add in those kind of like lines and specks and dots and kind of like breaking it up, yeah, it gives you an edge highlight, but also kind of gives you like a not very clean effect, if you know what I mean. It looks like it's kind of chipped away. Also, as a bonus, it's actually a really easy way to do edge highlights without worrying about smooth lines, because you just got to, you're purposely being kind of messy with it. But I kind of prefer just going for like the smooth lines and then adding in little weathering bits myself. And if you do happen to make a line too thick or a bit messy, what you can do is, well, actually I'll try try replicate it on the little ankle part for you here quick. So yeah, if you've got like kind of a thick messy line like that, what you're going to kind of do is where the, the thickness is, you just kind of make a line coming out of it. So it just kind of looks like a chunk that's been, like the paint's been hit off or something like that. It just kind of blends it out a bit. And when it comes to the flat parts of the armor, you just, you know, put a little, a little nick like this. You know, maybe do two lines coming from the bottom here. Once again, the key is just to not overdo it. Okay, the one on the knee and stuff is probably a bit too thick, but there's a couple of examples there of how to just add in a bit of weathering without really doing weathering. So I'm going to be doing the straight line method, adding a little bit of nicks in. I'm going to finish the whole miniature like this, and I'm going to get back to you guys. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, a really important thing for edge highlighting is just finding the correct angle to of your miniature. So like the bottom of the foot here, it's much easier if you actually just flip the model upside down. Yeah, your paintbrush just kind of fits in there and it goes pretty nicely, apart from I just I messed this one up a little bit. And the same thing when you're doing the shoulder pads and stuff like that. You know, just flip the model around, find the right angle, be patient and yeah then it's not that bad. All right, so hopefully you can see the edge highlighting's all done now. And the, the ones I first did on camera look a bit like thick and cartoonish, but the rest of the miniature, they're, they're a lot more thin and, yeah, a bit more subtle. And like I said, apart from, you know, getting your paint on a nice consistency so it flows off your paintbrush and get a nice point on there, just be patient. You can do anything if you just kind of take your time with it. All right, so on to the hammer grip now. And I'm going to be doing a little edge highlight of Ushabti Bone now. So I'm going to be doing kind of like a edge highlight around the square triangly bits. And then I'm going to be going 
just just on the tippy corners I'm going to be going with Screaming Skull. Yeah, definitely not the cleanest lines over there, so I'm just going to go off camera quickly, get it done, and I'll show you guys what it looks like, what it's supposed to look like. So that size when I was trying to show you guys, and this end is where I kind of went off camera, and I think it looks a lot better. Yeah, so when you're like trying to do such thin, small details, another little tip is, you know, you've got to lock your arms up, get your elbows locked in place and stuff. You know, you don't want those shaky hands. All right, so I'm just going to slap some Screaming Skull of the most pointy, tippy, tip-top places, and then I'm going to get back to you guys. There we go, the final Screaming Skull on there, if you guys can even see that. Yeah, not looking too bad. And now I'm just going to do a, a quick edge highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh on this little parch mini bit. I mean, you can go lighter with the parts, or maybe layer the palette witch flesh instead of edge highlight, but I don't know, I kind of prefer the, the darker look of it. And then when that's done, I'm just going to use white to, you know, just little specks right on the, the edges. Now, one thing I did forget to mention, if you want to highlight the black of the gun, one thing I've been doing recently quite a bit, if I want to like speed some things up, I've actually been dry brushing silver using like Necron compound. So it actually highlights the silver and the black, kind of looks like the, the black is worn down to the steel. Now, if you want that quick method, then you should probably obviously do that before you do the parchment. And if you do want to do that, I would actually recommend buying Necron compound because it does give you a much smoother dry brushing blend than just getting like normal silver paint. All right, and speaking about doing blacks and stuff like that, I'm going to be doing my pack markings now. And once again, you can do this to taste. I normally try to do different squads, you know, having different, slightly different looking markings, but it doesn't really matter too much. And usually, up until recently, I'd normally stencil out my pack markings, you know, just use standard old sellotape, cut tiny little strips and, you know, mark it out because it's just little triangles and stuff at the end of the day. But I've actually started trying a little bit more freehanding and, you know, doing it myself. And because it's a pretty simple shape, it's a good way to practice your freehanding. And also, I'd recommend maybe starting on the kneecaps, so you got a much smaller place to start. All you got to do is, you know, line it up, and if you make a mistake, you just go back over with the red and then back over the black until you get a nice smooth line. And what I normally do with, like, kind of bigger sections, I'll do a dot, a dot, and a dot down there and just kind of, like, link them up. But for this, on camera, I'm just going to try, do it all willy-nilly and see how it turns out. Alright, that's not too bad. It doesn't look too uneven. All we're going to do now is colour in the lines. And obviously I'll be doing a similar thing on the top there, just a little bit bigger. And boom, pack markings are done. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty decently straight line considering I did it in one go. One thing I am slowly realizing as I'm doing these like troops and all that kind of stuff is I think I'm doing my pack markings a bit too thick I think because like you get the red should be the the main color whereas right now I think I'm most of it's black most of the time so yeah if I was you maybe try to do some like thinner sharper lines instead of like big thick wedges that I'm doing here alrighty so on to highlighting the grays now now you can grays you can highlight in any way you want I've personally actually been thinking of maybe going for more of a blue highlight because, you know, grey on grey seems a bit too much, but grey kind of highlights the colours around it, so I figured, you know, grey makes sense. So obviously, as you can see here, I'm going to be using ashen grey for the first highlight. So yeah, we'll do a little edge highlight, you know, along the gun and the piping and, you know, maybe do some nicks on the, the black shoulder pad, you know, weather that a bit with the ashen grey, and then we'll come in with a kind of finer highlight of Dawnstone. And if you really want to push it, you know, put a little, little drop of uh, Administratum Grey on those corners and stuff as well. If you need a little, that, that really makes it pop. But for this, I'm just sticking to those two colors. And it's done. And you know, Ash and Grey, you can't really see it too much, which is probably a good thing. So it kind of blends in a bit better. You know, the Dawnstone does most of the highlight, rarely, you know. But yeah, I've got some scuffs over there on the shoulder pad. And also I tried something a little bit different on this one. You know, sometimes people actually edge highlight their colors, like this pack mark in here, which has never really made much sense to me because 
I don't know the edges wouldn't highlight really because it's a flat surface but I thought I'd try it out for you guys and see if it might pop a little bit more and there the dawn stone is done and to be honest with you guys I've always hated highlighting black it, it seems, seems like a very difficult color to highlight up yeah it didn't turn out too bad but yeah definitely not a fan of highlighting blacks and because of that I'm definitely dreading painting my wolf priest because you know their armor is all black and the last non-metallic thing to highlight up is the red now to kind of weather the the pack markings with the red you just want to take your red highlight colors and you know just kind of chip away at the the black a little bit so we're going to be using evil sun scarlet for the the first highlight so for the gem you obviously just want to do kind of a edge highlight and I actually recorded this before but my camera wasn't rolling and yeah I tried to show you guys how I weathered the black but you can kind of see what I did there and like I always say about weathering don't go too over the top you know just just kind of break up the black a little bit here and just rinse and repeat for the knee and you don't really need to try and weather in the middle of the the black color if you just stick to the edges and bring the red and the black together if you kind of know what I mean just chip it away on the edges I think that looks a little bit better and now I'm just going to do a little edge highlight of Wild Rider Red. You know, just going just underneath those little little nicks and stuff like that. And of course, there's the little tippy top of the, the gem as well. Just get everything popping a little bit more. And now I'm pretty sure we're on to the meta metallics. All right, now you've got two options. One, if you want to save time and be real quick, you just go over again the metallics with your original base coat. So like I did Balthazar gold for the that part and then I did a wash and then you just do Balthazar gold as an edge highlight kind of thing. Same with the lead belcher. And it gives you a bit of a highlight and it doesn't look as blinged up. And your second choice is kind of the normal way. Go for your highlight and then a super highlight. But for my silver I normally like it quite dark. Kind of like a working steel kind of thing if you know what I mean. So normally I'll go over again with lead belcher and there may be an edge highlight of runefang steel. But for this one I'm just going to go straight in with some runefang. So yeah, nothing too fancy, just a nice little edge highlight with this runefang steel. So yeah, let's do it. So the highlight of the steel is done, but I actually had a bit of an issue with this. Because my dog decided to come in, knock my tripod over, hit me, and I swiped silver all across the model. So yeah, I'm going to have to go back and clean that all up. Now. So yeah, as you can see, it's all over the place down here, underneath there. Anyway, so yeah, thanks Pooch for the extra work. And then for the gold, so for my first highlight, for the thicker highlight, I'm going to be doing Gehenna's gold. And then for the final, like, super edge, tippy top highlight, I'll be using Auric Armor Gold. And there we go. So that's all the gold done. So what I did was, like for example here with these little feathery bits, with the Gehenna's gold, I kind of went like halfway down the feathers. And then with the Auric, I just kind of went like a quarter slash the tip, you know. Give it that slight transition of shininess. So yeah, at this point we're pretty much done with like the armor and all that kind of stuff. All i got to do now is do the face and the power weapon. And if you remember, I did about three or four... Thin coats of Rakar flesh on the face there. And now I'm just going to slap a little wash of Reikland flesh shade on there. And while that wash is actually drying, I'm going to cut back to my other video about making snow bases. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start finishing this base up. But if that doesn't really matter to you guys, I'll just be back with the paint in a second. Yeah, just remember not to have giant pools of wash. And yeah, should be fine. And as you can see now, the base is coming along. But as I was doing that, I just realized I haven't highlighted the... The bronze, so I'm just going to quickly highlight that with Rune Lord Brass. But that only matters if you actually used any brass in your model. Alright, and back to the face. That wash is nice and dry. And firstly, I'm going to layer some Flayed One Flesh. And once again, I cannot emphasize this enough. I'm really not very good at faces. I kind of want to do that face a day challenge where you just paint a face every single day or whenever you have time. You know, it's not attached to a model or anything like that. You just get ahead and paint it. I think that would really help out. Alright, so what I'm actually going to try to do is I'm going to try and get the eyes and maybe the teeth done in there first. So yeah, just make sure you've got a nice point on your paintbrush and be very, very patient. Yeah, and I'm just using ceramite white, but you can probably use any sort of white color because this means such a small area. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that now. 
And that's the face done so far and my attempt at eyes. Not the worst ever, but I've kind of got a policy with faces where if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it kind of thing. So I always end up messing it up more. But now I'm just going to move into the super edge highlight of Pallet Witch Flare. So you just want to pick out little bits on the nose, the eyebrows, all that kind of stuff. Really fine details. I do find my recesses here are pretty dark, especially now that the Pallet Witch Flash is on there. But I'm satisfied enough. I mean, it kind of looks like human skin. So yeah, I'll take that as a win. Now all i got to do is the beard and the airbrush work. But to be honest... Once the beard's done, the miniature's actually done because, like I said, you don't have to be doing any glowy stuff. And he seems like the kind of dude that has a big bushy red beard, so I'm gonna, that's the kind of colour I want to try and go for here. Not too bright though, I'm gonna go for more of a, a burgundy. So I'm gonna be layering his beard and his hair with corn red, then I'm gonna be going over with a wash of Noln oil, layering a bit of was darker red, and then another finer highlight of squig orange. So hopefully this won't turn out looking too similar to his little like leathery bags and pistol holster and stuff. And there he is, the hair's all done. I kind of laid it in and highlighted it in like streaks so hopefully if it's visible it kind of has like a hair texture to it. So there we go, the miniature is done. I mean the base is done, everything's done. But like I said, I'm going to be throwing in that extra step of the airbrush. And once again, I'm not a pro with airbrush, I'm kind of learning it myself. So I'm just going to kind of cut and come back to you guys when that's done. Give you guys a showcase and then just give you guys a bit of a proper showcase of the model. And we're back. This is actually a couple days later to be honest. I had a couple other projects to get done and I thought this didn't need to be done right now. And since actually doing this video, I've recently painted up my Rune Priest. If you've seen that maybe on Instagram or whatever. That face actually looks a lot better than this one. So there's definitely some improvement there. Uh, one thing I did forget earlier was... I didn't put the wash around the, the red, so that's another thing I've done there. And of course I did the power hammer. Just a quick little spray. Nothing too fancy, all I did was blast it with some Cantor blue. Then I just mixed in a little bit of white. Then I like kind of tapered it down a little bit, added a little bit more white and blasted it on the end. So yeah, I probably went a bit too over the top of the white on the end. I think I should have been a bit more like subtle with my transitions. But I think it turned out fine once I edge highlighted around all the little bits with pure white as well. So yeah, unless I've missed something, I'm pretty sure that's everything, guys. I'm just going to cut to a nice little showcase here. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if it was somewhat informative. It's my first time doing this kind of thing and it turned out to be a bit more of a nightmare than I thought to edit because I had some like audio issues and I had to kind of redub some parts. But yeah, like I said, this is kind of a... Uh, relatively quick above tabletop standard and I hopefully it's helped you guys out and if you like the video you know what to do and of course comment below tell me what you think tell me how I can maybe improve on future videos like this maybe chuck in some of your own tips on painting and all that kind of stuff so if anybody watches this and they read the comments they can get that extra bit of information but as always guys if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more hobby content maybe check out my channel and subscribe because I've been releasing quite a fair bit amount of content recently. You know, kid bash videos, unboxings, reviews, now painting videos as well, general hobby chats and stuff like that. So yeah, so yeah, definitely check my channel out. But until then, see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.